Hey guys, welcome to Technic Club. Welcome to 2018, our first episode of Techno Blog for the year. My name is Eben Wilkins. And my name is Maurice John. All right. And we are here to start the, uni the new year off with a very deep dive into an interesting topic. What are we talking about today, Eben? All right. So uh, first off, I'm going to talk about net neutrality. Um, in 2017, net neutrality is one of the biggest topics in tech mainly because it balanced the internet for everybody, it created equality for everybody. Mm -hmm. And in November, was it November or December? I, I honestly can't remember the exact date. If you take a, a step back a little, a little bit, I think all of this, it's 2017 was a kind of a really strange <coughs> year. We have Trump as president. If you're seeing this Trump, I love you and support you. <laughs> Yes, a little bit. <laughs> Side joke. But um, we, we see a lot of changes happening in America, and, and America is almost like the guiding light to the world. So anything that happens in America, you have to really keep an eye on it. You have to keep a thumb on it and say, okay, if something is happening in America, more than likely it's going to affect us here in the Caribbean. And one of the big things that really took hold in the tech community was net neutrality. And we are really here today to really guide you as to what exactly is this net neutrality? Is it important to you? Should you be concerned about net neutrality? So that is what we're going to be doing in, in, in this episode. So Eben, what exactly is net neutrality? Uh, so net, net neutrality is the guiding principle that all internet data must be treated the same with no discrimination and no extra charges for using the information on the internet. Basically, internet should be free for everybody, no matter who you are. So that's the guiding principle behind net neutrality. Exactly, so now when we, when we look at net neutrality and we look at the internet, now, I'm a tech person, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, one of the reasons, one of the biggest reasons why the internet is now so connected, so together, is because of the internet. Now, this argument with net neutrality is so important because we are talking about a connection between everybody on the planet. How should that be looked upon? Now, if we are going to really look at net neutrality, you have to look at, you know, give a, 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 similar, a, a similar scenario and see how each of these scenarios, you know, can we can find some inflection points. Let's look at electricity. Electricity is a basic need for everybody. That is an established fact years ago. So if we are in St. Vincent, let me ask you, Ben, is there preferential treatment for Leeward side? I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Where everybody gets access to electricity. Right. Nobody pays a little extra so their electricity will be faster and all of that. Right. It's just uh, it's just electricity. It's just electricity. It, you can Vinla can get up to there and say, oh well, you know what? You are you I in leeward side, it costs more to put poles in the leeward side, so your electricity bill is going to be exponentially higher. They can do that. Right. Or they can say, well, Kingston need more electricity, so we are going to stop giving electricity to leeward. Mm -hmm. In St. Vincent we have when it comes to utilities like that, water, light, and all of these things, these basic utilities that people need to survive, we look at it as a need, and there's no difference, no, no difference that one man can get privilege over another person. Right. And, and that's the gist of not net neutrality is. It's treated, just like Marie said, as a utility, like a water, like water equal for everybody right because the internet has been so is now so ingrained in our lives mm -hmm. people rely on it for business people rely on it to survive yeah so 
we we need to look at it and i am employing vincent to look at the internet as a way to survive in st vincent we don't have a lot of internet businesses and all of these things but mm -hmm. we have to know look into the future what could be the future for st vincent can we be a st vincent that is supported so heavily by the internet that we have e-commerce and all of these things that we are totally connected, like how America is, and these bigger countries are connected and ingrained in the internet. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a pause here, and yeah. I hope that you stick with us when we come back. All right. Welcome back, folks. Um, so, on display, you should be seeing two different aspects of net neutrality, or the internet, I should say. One where it shows equal lanes, and another one that shows different variety of lanes, fast lane, fast lane, and slow lane. All right, so we're gonna try and dissect net neutrality a bit and what the decisions made by the FCC in the US have on the internet going forward. So the equal lanes, this is what net neutrality was previously, right? Everybody enjoyed the same speed, the same features, the same benefits. And there was no discrimination. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no fast tracking, there was no slowing down and that kind of thing. But I must say that before the net neutrality was introduced, companies like Netflix mm -hmm. had to pay extra to Comcast in order to get their uh, video streaming service operating at optimum peak. Mm -hmm. Because they realized that Comcast was... What's the word? S slowing down. Slowing down. Trotling, yes, throttling their, their, their yeah. internet. Throttling their internet. So, in our, and persons not notice this, and because of this, net Netflix had to come and pay. So, without net neutrality now, this is something that's going to be reoccurring on a regular basis. Companies are now going to have to pay, pay. the internet service providers for whatever benefit they need. All right. So when we when we look at <coughs> this, right, there are two two broad sections that the FCC were dealing with. There's Title One and Title Two. What existed before was Title Two, where there was vigor, there, there was vigorous regulation. That is what they wanted to get rid of this year, and they succeeded because they had the voting power. Title One is what they want to revert now to, where you have light regulation, and they're saying, okay, as long as you tell us why we throttle the internet or a company is paying for um, a, a faster lane, it is okay. <clears throat> but before there was tighter regulation. Now, how is that? going to impact us. Now, one of the examples that Eben brought up is Netflix. And even before Netflix, I'm certain that a lot of incentives might know about torrents. Right. Um, when the big torrents were really going and, and really um, popular, you see ISP companies throttling torrents because people used to put a 4 gig file to download and leave and leave the house and the file downloading. So the internet was being, uh, getting to a bottleneck and this company was throttling the, 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 the torrent. So a big court case came out of that and people start evaluating, should there be slowdowns? And one of the fundamental arguments they were making is, if you have a car, I have a truck, I'm driving on a road, is it my responsibility to fix the road because I have a truck. So Netflix is a truck. They have heavier load, people are watching videos, and the road is like Digicel, Lime, Comcast, and all of these companies. Whose responsibility is it to maintain the roads, make new roads, just because I have a truck? And let's say you are a, a, a regular page that has four, web, four pages. Let's say you're Wikipedia, not much media, but I am YouTube and Netflix. I am the Mac truck going along on the road that you provide, and you are the smaller, nimble car. Is it my responsibility, because I am heavier, to pay you more 
to use the road. And you, this is the, this is what you have to think about. Imagine you buy a truck. Should the government say to you, you know what, these truck drivers, they have the bigger trucks. We need to tax them more because of the road. Should there be an equality as that is your responsibility to make sure that the road is maintained, make sure that the infrastructure is built out, and it's my responsibility to make sure that I, I, I don't crash on the road, I drive carefully, and all of these things. That is the, the conversation that is, that, that is being had mm -hmm. right now. Right. And that conversation is used by both parties, those mm -hmm. who are for net neutrality and those against net neutrality. neutrality. Because those who are against net neutrality are saying that if they are able to charge these heavy loaders, the mm. extra money, mm -hmm. that money can be, go, can be go into improving infrastructure and it therefore improve innovation and technology. Exactly. So at this point, we're going to take a Another short, break. Short, short break <laughs> and we'll be back to give you more information yeah. on net neutrality. All right. And we are back. So at this point, we're going to play some devil's advocate. Um, I'm going to represent for net neutrality, and Eben is going to be against. So Eben, why are you against net neutrality? Well, for for one, right, as a service provider, um, having this sole responsibility to foot the infrastructure bill of the internet is extremely heavy and very tasking, especially if you're just one ISP in the area. It's tasking and, and you know, just a heavy load for one person to handle. Mm -hmm. So with the, with the abandonment of the net neutrality and the, the ease of, of all these legislations and regulations to restrict the use of the internet, I could be more creative and therefore get more income to then improve the infrastructure, which would then better the lives of the businesses um, and the community in general. Okay, so now I am against um, your point. I am for net neutrality, and here's here's why I'm, I'm for net neutrality. And of course, this is this is just us this play, is playing a yeah. playing a role. Yeah, but I'm trying to explain to you the you know the different sides. <coughs> the reason why I am against that that concept is we live in a capitalist capitalist world and we are going to say to ISPs we are going to trust that when you make more profit this profit will actually come back to us as consumers is a kind of a trickle down politics you know that kind of give more so that we will benefit I don't see that happening in a capitalist, capitalist world. Okay. If they make more profit, I believe that shareholders will make more money. Okay. That is my honest belief. Mm -hmm. Now, one of, the, one of the fundamental problems with abandoning the idea of net neutrality is competition. Mm -hmm. The internet became the internet because of competition. Because of that competitive spirit that a, a man like Mark Zuckerberg could drop out of university with an idea and compete with bigger companies. Mm -hmm. Establish social media platforms, the MySpaces, the High Fives. Facebook had no money when they started. And because the internet was an open place, that company became successful. Mm -hmm. But but why do you think I'm going to close the internet? Why Here's why I think you... We're, we're not uh -huh. only living in a capital market, we're also living in a free world market. Uh -huh. All right? Why are these reg regulations why these restricting regulations? me? Here's, yeah, here's why we have to regulate. <laughs> here's why we have to regulate you, Mr. ISP. Here's why. Uh -huh. Let's pretend, let's go back a few years before Facebook ever bought, dropped on the scene. If high five, everybody was on high five. I was in grammar school and the, the hot thing was high five. High five at that point in time, they could have rested on their lorries and not innovate and say, ISP, give me a faster lane. Give me more preference. I could drop some money in your pocket and you could give me a faster speed 
and access than Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now, what would the wall had been now if High Five could have dropped some money in, in ISP's pockets? Mm -hmm. They might have not been on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that is the principle that we're seeing coming up here where companies can pay for preference. That stifles innovation. Mm -hmm. Let's use another example that you, 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 you are close with. Microsoft. If is it that Microsoft could have yeah. paid uh -huh. for bad press or, or, or when uh. Android was coming up mm -hmm. to stifle out the innovation that come up from Android, mm -hmm. we would not have had this world that we live in. Mm -hmm. So the reason why regulation is absolutely needed is because we might be happy with what we have now, mm -hmm. but we do not know what somebody could be creating. And one of my biggest problems and one of my biggest concerns is, as a Caribbean country, we have a golden opportunity to capitalize on the internet. And because we are so far behind, our, you know, when runners are running and they, they catch a win, our wind is coming. So when developers in St. Vincent say, you know what, we could create a Facebook for St. Vincent, which is better. Would I want Facebook to use their deeper pockets to stifle out that when I have a better product? And that is what we are trying to protect with an open internet. All right. And again, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back for our final segment on net neutrality. <laughs> Welcome back to Techno Blurb, and this episode we're talking net neutrality. And my colleague here, Maurice, was trying to defend <laughs> net neutrality, and I'm opposing, right? But to continue the discussion, um, the Digital Group CEO, Vanessa Chuet? <laughs> Slowly, Slow Vanessa Slowy. She mm. quoted, it's a case of horses for courses, rather than one size fits all. This is a victory for telecoms, consumers, and economies. She's, she is commenting on the FCC's ruling on net neutrality, abandoning net neutrality. And what she's saying is that for everybody, internet serves a different purpose, all right? And I think that a lot of persons have serious trust issues with internet service providers. There are other regulations that can govern our, compet our competitive nature, all right? You don't have to put so much regulations on the use of the internet, but the regulations can come on practice use of the internet. Mm. Therefore, restricting or regulating how ISPs like myself and TDCell mm. will treat um, other businesses to protect small group businesses, mm -hmm. all right? Because everybody's, everybody's running from, what if Google, you know, paying the ISPs to prevent persons from seeing another competition's website. Everybody's running from that issue. But again, you could have other governing bodies regulate that kind of situation, your practice. Um, but yeah, did you sell is applauding, just like many telecom com companies around the world, is applauding the FCC's rule on net neutrality and is encouraging other ISPs in the region to, you know... Come on board. Come on board. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> and, boy. And hug the opportunity to improve and innovate with the, you know, with the less regulations on their hand. I, and, and I disagree, of mm -hmm. course. One of the one of the, the, the one of the most dangerous things in St. Vincent right now, when you go, and I'm not going to say I'm going to say it openly, when you buy a a, a package with Digicel, you get free social media packages. You get Facebook free, you get WhatsApp free, and that it comes with your data plan. 
Facebook is not the entire spectrum of social media. Right. <clears throat> that gives an unfair advantage to Facebook. People in St. Vincent will applaud it. Yes! Yay! Free Facebook, free WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. But that is not the best practice. Mm -hmm. Why that is not the best practice? Because something existed before WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. What we used to use in, in, in grammar school. You remember what we used to use? AOL and all of these things. Where are they now? So the wonderful things that were in the past that we don't use anymore, we cannot let them be the standard. We have to let these companies fight out innovation. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins get to have a right on our devices. Yeah. But so, you know, nothing comes free. Mm -hmm. Although you're getting the free WhatsApp, the free calls and all these things through the internet, it's at the cost of the ISPs bandwidth. That is, that is true. It's, right? So when you hogging up all these bandwidth, mm -hmm. right? The ISP now has to find some way by still making it free so that you can still enjoy mm. all these great speeds. Man, mm. you, you still want faster speeds, you know? Yeah, that is you true. You still want faster speed and you still want it free. No, right? let me let me and hold on. ISP, ISP hold still on. has to hold on, you know, ISP. build ISP and hold all on. infrastructure. Hold tell on, me. ISP. Let me hear let me tell you something, Mr. ISP. Mm -hmm. The reason why the internet is so popular is because of innovation. Right. If Facebook wasn't fighting for innovation, mm -hmm. you know what, what what we used to do? Mm -hmm. We used to go kick ball outside and play cricket. Mm -hmm. Because of the innovation of the internet, cricket is no longer popping. Mm -hmm. Mind you. Football is no longer popping. Mind you. So even if you say, <laughs> Mr. ISP, even if you say uh -huh. that you are trying to give us a better life, the mere fact that the competition existed before, before net neutrality, before net neutrality yes, something else had to die mm -hmm. for your pockets to increase. Mm -hmm. So cricket died, soccer died, ring games died mm -hmm. for this. Now, if it is that you're going to lock us into a wall where you hold the cards, you might just see people gravitate back to soccer. Because if Facebook gets stale, but Facebook dropping a whole heap of money in your pocket. You might see people get up and say, me go outside and play. Let me go back and do the things I used to do. You might see that. And you have to now think, something died for the internet to come. All of these activities. Now, if is it that we're going to say, this is it. This is the standard for the internet. I could give you more money. And you could build the fastest network, the fastest thing you want with it. But then if you're going to not push innovation, then you might see something else take its place and your business that you're trying to protect dies. Mm -hmm. You understand, Mr. ISP? <laughs> this discussion could go on for a bit longer than this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're out of time, folks. And I could go on. We could, uh, we go, could go on. on. But we, we could, will yeah. go on. This mm. is just the first the first episode that we're going to do on net neutrality. But trust me, it's, it uh, is a deep topic that needs it is. and needs a, a lot of discussion. We're going to definitely try to bring more people onto the program so we could do a broader discussion and you know dialogue and see how much we could educate the Vincentian public on the topic of net neutrality because it is absolutely important. Yeah. Absolutely important. So, how do we find VC3 on the internet? All right, you can find VC3 on Facebook and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Just search VC3 TV mm -hmm. and on channel 114. Exactly. Um, How you find Technoblob? Technoblob, we're on YouTube, Technoblob, and on Facebook, Technoblob. So keep following. Um, yeah. Send us a message if you want to see anything. If you want, if you had feedback on what we are talking about, just pop us a message and let us know your thoughts. Thank yeah. you for coming along on this ride with us. Mm -hmm. And once again, happy New Year to everyone. And my name is Maurice John, and I'm Ibe Wilkins. Thank you for supporting our episode.